Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of death. Saint Michael the Archangel, pray for us all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. If you remember, on the feast of May 8th, we celebrate the uh, apparition of St. Michael the Archangel. Well, in the apparition, there was at the end of it a a church dedicated to St. Michael. Today, we celebrate the dedication of that church and uh, the beautiful ceremony of a dedication. But I'll tell the story in any case. It uh, took place long ago, and this man, a, a farmer, was out tending to his flock, this time not of sheep, but of cows. And a, a bull got away and strayed away from the rest of them and went up into a wooded area. And there went right up to the entrance of a, a large cave. The cave, the entrance to the cave was blocked by all sorts of bushes and trees, but the bull stayed there. And wouldn't move, and so the the farmer he shot an arrow at the at the bull, and wouldn't you know, but that the arrow went straight towards him, and then all of a sudden, miraculously, turned around and came right back at the one who shot it, and and all of the people there. Well, they thought this was a very strange happening, as I think we all would. So they went to the bishop of the town and explained to him everything that had happened. Well, the bishop right away thought, well, there must be some supernatural cause here in which there is something to be learned. So he had his whole congregation of priests and religious fast and pray for three whole days. And finally, St. Michael appeared to the holy bishop and told him, I would like for you to build a church in that cave and dedicate it to to myself, St. Michael, and all the angels. And so he did. He was very joyful at the news. And he told the whole town about it and all of his clergy. And they got together and formed a, a very large procession. They processed to the top of the mountain where it was and opened it up. Well, it was already all arranged. It looked like a church. They took away all the trees from the opening. And it looked like a place for a perfect church. It even had an opening in the top so that the sun shone down into it to give light to the priest offer mass. The only thing that was missing was an altar. The altar the bishop quickly had built, and they dedicated this church in honor of it, St. Michael. Well, there's all sorts of apparitions like this about St. Michael, and his. this is how his, you might say, his cultus started and really spread was through these apparitions and churches being dedicated to him all over the world. He is very popular among Catholics for many things. He is the patron saint of police officers. He is also the protector of Holy Mother Church, which is perhaps one of his greatest titles. And uh, he protects the church in all of her trials and the members of the church too, against heresy and all of the rest. He is also the patron saint of and protector of the Blessed Sacrament. I think that is one of my favorite things to know about him, that at every Holy Mass, he protects the Blessed Sacrament, so lest the priest, by accident, knock over the chalice filled with the precious blood. He's watching over the Blessed Sacrament. Even should a, a little particle of the Sacred Host detach itself and fall to the ground, St. Michael protects it. He is always there. He is watching over our blessed Lord. It's a beautiful thought to know that he is at every Mass protecting the Blessed Sacrament. When he fought, he was he was the first of the good angels to stay faithful to our Lord at, at the beginning of at the beginning of the angelic creation. Remember that when they were all well there are different theories on what the temptation was or the trial was that the angels were put through to gain their eternal reward or punishment. But most of, but some of them say it was this, that it was revealed to the angels that the second person of the Blessed Trinity would become a man and that the angels would have to show their homage 
to this God-man. And the prideful spirits would not do it because human nature was far beneath the angelic nature. and They didn't have the humility to even worship a God who took on a human nature. And the other ones, the good angels, they went along with the program and did just that and adored the incarnate word. Well, it says that a great battle ensued. St. Michael and his angels against Lucifer and his. This, he's often depicted with a shield. On this shield, it says, Who is like unto God? Well, that's what the word Michael means. Who is like to God? And that is how he fought off Lucifer. Who is like God? Lucifer tried to make himself, through his own diabolic pride, he tried to make himself like unto God. And that's when St. Michael said, Who is like God? No one is like God. No one can be anything like God. And so he fought him with these words, and he pushed Lucifer and all of the, the, the evil spirits into the pit of the fires of hell, there to, to be condemned for their awful pride, trying to raise themselves up like God. They say that this is one of the ways in which to fight temptation. To have some saying like that. St. Michael had, who is like God? You too should have some thoughts, some pious thoughts that are they're here, ready to go. So that when, when the moment of temptation comes, you turn to them. For some of the saints, it was thinking of Jesus crucified. For others, it was the presence of their guardian angel and they would never want to shame their guardian angel. For others, it was being placed under the mantle of the Blessed Mother of God. And for others, it is the fear of the fires of hell or the rewards of paradise. Have some thought that's there so that when the moment of temptation comes, you turn to it and it raises your heart to God. And remember this, that in the moment of temptation, if your heart doesn't turn to God and you don't turn to, to Him in prayer, you will most likely fall. There is actually an obligation to pray in moments of temptation. But what is the lesson of today's saint? Well, hunting season's coming up. Might be a lesson to hunters, I'm thinking, maybe the shooting of the arrow. Just watch out if St. Michael's around. You don't want the arrow coming right back. But in any case, I doubt that's the lesson. The lesson is just this, St. Michael and humility. It's all found in the gospel. If you want to enter into heaven, you must become childlike. What does that mean? Well, a child trusts. He believes. So, when temptation comes, what happens? In our own mind, we get all worked up and anxious, fearing that we're going to fall. Well, no. We shouldn't get anxious. In fact, that anxiousness that, that goes on in our mind, that only serves to intensify whatever temptation comes, whether it was a temptation against holy purity or, or anger or anything else, you calmly dismiss it. Like a child who knows, well, my father's here to protect me, and he will protect me. And you cast yourself into his arms, and you pray for his help. You have that great confidence that as long as you return to your father's arms and go to him for shelter, you will overcome. And you can do that with great great calmness. But St. Michael, he teaches us, who is like to God? In other words, who can give us such a reward for all of the little temptations that we fight with childlike simplicity and confidence? God will reward that immensely. Who is like unto God? Let us remember those words today. And with those words, push away all diabolic temptations. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.